Hi guys, welcome to the mix. It is um, blah, 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 ding dong merrily in the mix and stuff. It's almost a Christmas one, I guess. It has been altogether too long since I've actually seen you. Um, I, I tried to remember just when I was setting this all up and I guess it was a week, I wanna say it was a week before Black Friday, Pink Friday, so that's what we've just survived. Uh, but I, I might have even been two weeks before that, so very, very sorry. Um, I am going to try and make up for it now by bringing you up to speed with a few bits and pieces, news, updates, kind of, yeah, catch up for the end of the year here, but don't worry, this may be the last one uh, I throw at you before, well, before 2020 is done. Woo, I'm sure everyone is very happy to see the back of 2020, uh, but um, there you go, there's a lot of stuff here. How did Black Friday go? Well, I hopefully loaded you guys, a bunch of you guys watching this actually stopped by and took uh, part in our Pink Friday uh, extravaganza. I'll be honest, it was not quite the spectacle our last year was uh, one was. Partially because we, we just didn't have the time to do the setup, difficulty getting bits and pieces in. I know, excuses, excuses, but the um, the, the reality is, is we've been firefighting pretty much since March, and it was quite hard to actually put the, the same level of work we put in last year into this one. Not to say we didn't have a load of stuff in, we stocked up as, as heavily as we possibly could, and we did offers on well, everything, there was the site-wide discount, and then there were additional freebies and pop-up things and gift bundles for pretty much everyone. So, yeah, it, it ended up being um, an overwhelming success, uh, too successful, to be honest, and we nearly died. Um, but we, we concentrated in the four days, and it went very, very well. So thank you to anyone who stopped by, and don't worry, we'll be doing the same again next year, and um, we will we'll try and tie up some more new launches and things. Because that worked so well in 2019. We didn't have quite the same experience this year, uh, but it is something that we are going to try and work into it next year. So it's not just like uh, promotions and sales and things and gift bundles. It's going to be actually new products launching. So that's pretty fun. Anyway, sorry, excuse me. Reset. Sorry, I actually timed myself so I don't go into two hours when I do these things and it hadn't gone on. Mm, so super unprofessional. But yeah, I had to get this in. A little bit fried. Again, Saturday, packing boxes and things because it's it's obviously was going to be a perfect storm, right? Because... Uh, this year, so many people, thanks to lockdowns and the rest, have moved to online shopping, discovered online shopping, so there's extra volume going on there. Uh, but also, um, we've got the Pink Friday, Black Friday, the kind of seasonal peak volume that we usually get, and then we've got the Christmas stuff. Uh, you know, the big C word, no, not COVID, Christmas, the big C word, um, that is uh, looming large now. So it's a couple of weeks away, as I say. So yeah, it's a last ditch effort here uh, to catch you up on things and, and just say hi and thank you and the rest. Uh, but yeah, it, because of that, it was absolutely um, crucifying. Uh, but yeah, pretty fantastic. So here we are anyway. Been a very, very unusual year and hopefully one that isn't quickly repeated. Obviously, I, we hope it's more positive next year with vaccines and the rest. We've got some other issues, Brexit coming up, for example. So if any of you are watching this from on the continent, I'm sure some of you are, some of our good regular customers. Uh, I will, there's some sites, uh, messages up on site and we've sent out an email and we're keeping an eye on things, but that's going to be a headache. But for right now, before I, I loop back to some stuff at the end, thank you for indulging me on this big spiel. Um, I'm going to take you through some of the new stuff that's come in. Now, uh, I'm not going to go into excessive detail on this. Sorry, mic's probably crackling away as it actually turned on. Yep. I, I'm not going to go into excessive detail on anything here in particular because, um, uh, not that it's bad, but it, there's no big spectacular launches here. I mean, we did have one. Um, you may have just seen uh, the last thing on our Instagram, I put something else up actually, but uh, we did the, the new monster, that's this guy, uh, Ultra Watermelon. So if you were lucky enough to snag some, um, then well done. Uh, <laughs> it sold out incredibly quickly. We knew it would. We actually got an okay amount of stock, but the way the orders have been going and how uh, much you can all imagine people wanted this, how much we wanted this, uh, it was going to fly. So we limited stock and everything, but it still got absolutely hammered, lasted about a couple of hours on site, I think. We do also have the Fiesta and the Rosa, the other two kind of US exclusive flavors that you don't currently get in Europe. Uh, and they are still on site as I shoot this, actually. So we managed to get slightly more of those. They were slightly less in demand with the supplier, I suppose. And um, yeah, they're still on site. So if you're for those brilliant they're still delicious drinks but yeah watermelon here new one came in i probably prefer i don't know maybe the apple the classic silver or even i really like the rosa um just it's a it's a more complex taste as far as monster uh, monster ultra drinks concerned it's a little bit more floral it's a little bit more berry like i don't know but i actually have a soft spot for the rosa but um yeah, this one I'm sure folks will like. It's a, it's a kind of marriage of sweet and sour as a sort of uh, watermelon thing. It tastes like Jolly Ranchers watermelons to me. So very, very nice anyway. We will get more of it back. I've chased the supplier. I've begged. I've pleaded. 
Sadly, it's going to be a 2021 job, but this, along with a whole bunch of other stuff, we've got things to look forward to in 2021, so yeah, don't worry, um, and this one will be coming back and we'll get more if we can, but we'll keep you posted. That's the, the last kind of big launch you probably saw from us. We've had a few other bits and pieces I'll show you now. Starting here, we haven't actually done any sort of launch on this one, but Oteen still going quite well. Uh, they've got new cookies coming out very soon, in fact, that look quite exciting. They've got um, crunchy bits in, I think, or sprinkles or something. So they've jazzed it up a bit. It's new packaging. But on that new packaging, we have got right here the most popular, the best-selling flavor of their Millionaire Crunch, um, the Salty Caramel. Uh, these are vegan. They are no longer gluten-free, so bear that in mind. We put notices on the site. I think it, there's been a slight form reformulation here, and this is the only reason I'm really going to show you these, because otherwise, not hugely exciting. Very, very nice. Been popular all year. We've had no stock for a while because they've been doing the tweaks. They've been doing the new packaging. Um, it is no longer gluten-free, so it's just regular oats in there, not gluten-free oats. Not sure what big change that's made, but um, this is where we find ourselves. So if you're gluten-free, I'd probably avoid this one for now. Um, still, 15 grams of protein, zero sugar, salted caramel, very nice. What have they done to this? I'll show you, it's one of my favorites, and I partially am starving right now. I've been all day packing, as I say, uh, so I want to eat it. So if I open it now, I can kind of justify it. Um, what have we got? Same thing you remember from before. It's actually, it feels more substantial. It feels chunkier. So actually shooting, there you go. You can see the layers quite distinctly. Um, the chocolate, I'm gonna say, I don't know exactly what they've done here. Nutritional is more or less the same. No great changes, um, but it feels the base is more crumbly, maybe because it's fresh. There seems to be more generous amounts of caramel and you've got thicker chocolate going on. So it's just, um, okay, it's cold in here at the moment, so it's not gonna show me on the cap, but the caramel when fresh is definitely, oh, come on, definitely um, splugier. Can I make it do it? I know, there you go spurting out but the um ooh, look at that yeah it tastes great these ones and again vegan you'd never ever know uh, the chocolate seems to be more generous so you get more of that in there it's quite a chunk but it's married by the extra soft caramel that again seems pretty generous and the more crumbly biscuit underside uh yeah it's, it's a very nice marriage feels very very decadent despite the low sugar and the low cows mm. Mm -mm -mm. yeah mm. it's a classic it's, um, I don't know, like a chocolate rice crispy cake with caramel on top and a hint of dark chocolate naughtiness. It works really, really well. Well, mm, mm. definitely the extra chocolate there. Anyway, you missed this. It's back in there now. There are three other flavors, but salted caramel was always where it was at. Vegan or otherwise, it's the best flavor, I think. They're back in. Shiny, slightly shiny new pack. Um, all okay. right. Mm, mm. I ate too much of it. 3D still going strong. Um, it's been the big energy drink winner through uh, Pink Friday. And we've got a, as I said, we've got gift bundles. I guess it's, it's all about gift bundles now because Christmas is so close. A lot of them are going out. We've done more than ever this year. And we've got a new, new-ish 3D one. So 3D Kings. So we were looking for sort of a Christmas analogy, Christmas pun thing, and we came up with the Three Kings. Basically, you get three cans. It's the three newest cans. So you get the gold, the silver, and the pink. They look kind of Christmassy and baubly. I went with gold. It's a little bit Christmassy here, so I was trying to get just a tinge of it in. Okay, the flavor is pineapple, coconut, sort of pina colada, which couldn't be less Christmassy, but very welcome right now. Um, yeah, we've got a 3D Kings bundle where you get three cans in a little display, um, like a cardboard display box thing. Pretty cute. Obviously, pick a mix sticker on it, gift tag on it, jump on site. We didn't have any made up. We've actually shipped out all the ones that were ordered that were made up ready to uh, to go today in the order, so I haven't got anything to show you, and I just didn't have the energy to remake it, but if you jump on site, you'll see it. it's pretty cute. Mm. Yes, I mean, the, the, the we do so many energy drinks now, uh, we should probably do more actual bundles and stuff with them, or we didn't think of it sooner, so we're a little bit late to the party with that, but we'll be doing more of that coming up. We might keep gift bundles in one way, shape, or form going into the new year, actually. It's something we're talking about, because it's always popular, birthdays, whatever it is, it's always quite nice. Anyway, um, this done. This next one, Outright Bars, we have got. This is something that actually did make the Instagram again as well. Gingerbread peanut butter. Uh, outright bars, I thought we were going to have to kiss goodbye to. Stock has been really hard to get hold of. It's very expensive at the best of times. Uh, I, yeah, we had some dated stock as well, so it just wasn't selling as well as it once did. We were going to say goodbye. I personally love it, and um, I kind of know Mark, and uh, we, we do enjoy the sups, and we get in the MTS way, machine way, for sure, when we can. That's hard to get as well. 
I should say, actually, we got the pumpkin spice. That's, that's on site. Just a few tubs, but the seasonal one we got back in. A couple of the other flavours. Still no red velvet, sadly, but some of them. Um, yeah, we got the gingerbread. We also got the breakfast bar, which is the white chalk mochaccino breakfast bar. So it's got a kind of coffee undertone, coffee theme, uh, but it's got addi um, additional velocitol. So it's, it's actually to help with like protein uptake and stuff. So uh, yeah, it, it doesn't really make any odds. I mean, you'd be quite safe to completely ignore that. Just the, the, the takeaway is that you get a little bit more bang for your buck in terms of the protein. But again, who cares? They just taste good. The peanut butter base, all the wonderful things about these real whole food outright bar type stuff. The one we were most excited about uh, was this one, the gingerbread. So instead of just waving it around, very cute. It's got gingerbread money on it, which is a guaranteed like fest on Instagram. Red, green, classic Christmas thing. Ah, uh, I will open this as well, or will I? You know what? I probably won't. Um, I could easily open this and eat it, but the thing is, we haven't got very many of them, and I don't think we're going to get any more. Seasonal limited edition and all, UK supply is completely out. I tried to get more a couple of days ago, so this is it. So we've probably got half a dozen boxes left or something. They've been surprisingly popular, but then again, gingerbread, peanut butter, very cute, been out of stock for a while, not surprising. We also got cookies and cream back in, cookie dough, uh, we haven't had those for ages. One or two of the other classic flavours, but I mean, I'm, I'm going to remove some of them as they, they stop selling, like these s'mores, for example, the marshmallow one, nice bar just completely stop selling. So some of them are going to go, but I'm going to keep them on in some capacity. Anyway, yeah, we've got the gingerbread in. Forgive me for not opening it, um, but uh, there's no there's no gingerbread, uh, like mad gingerbread chunks or anything. It does have crispies in it, which gives you a sort of sense of it. It's got that same classic peanut butter base. Very, very sweet. It's got spicing in there. It's, um, yeah, it, it is quite a spiced bar. It, come, it, it kind of, it comes on afterwards, but it, it, you know, it's a good hearty warming one. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, if you want one of these, uh, jump in, uh, jump in. The mochaccino bar sold out already. We just didn't get that much of that in. We didn't have a chance. And coffee things were always iffy. Uh, but yeah, the, um, these are still on there along with a bunch of the other flavors like the cookies and cream back, which is like an Oreo one. Really fantastic, uh, on site at the moment. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm sorry, but I, I always like opening these things, but the outright bars, they, they're just kind of chunks, like wedges of uh, like peanut butter oats, and you, you get it, they all look more or less the same, and there's no particularly exciting inclusions in that. So I'll spare myself that. I'll let you guys have more of a chance of getting it stock without me opening that, that than eating it on camera. Uh, and that's in the mix now, and you can check out the nutritionals. But they're like, what is it, 15, 16 grams of protein, 16 grams of protein, wholesome protein goodness, fresh salt, nut butter base, no sugar alcohol. So this is the usual deal with these. Very, very tasty, won't upset your stomach. Very good, certainly post-workout, very satisfying, one of my favourite bars, the whole format is. Next one then, we're going to move on to CMP, uh, that's sitting here, we've got two flavours, we've got Jam Roly Poly, these little guys here, 45 grams, slightly smaller than a Fulfill Bar, a Grenade Bar, a Bear Bells Bar, uh, we've got Jam Roly Poly, and we've got down there, Chocolate Brownie, I think they call it, straight up chocolate brownie, bit meh. Um, just, yeah, full-on chocolate type thing. It's, it's a nice bar, doesn't really merit showing you these things. Uh, I will, uh, that one at least, I will open this one, a little bit different, and you'll see the format is a little familiar. So it's a bit like, they're not vegan, um, and they're not even vegetarian, but they're a little bit like the um, Awesome Sups vegan bars, and indeed the Misfits vegan bars we have. So I'd wager it's the same factory. There's a crossover in terms of like the pea protein. They're roughly the same size, the 45 gram, as the Misfits. So. There you go. Bit of a weird one for CMP here. We saw it teased, uh, I think on Stacked it was announced, and it went on their own website, and then we managed to get hold of some. Um, so yeah, there was actually quite a lot of interest because they were only doing whole boxes and people wanted to try singles. Uh, and they're actually, they're quite nice. I think the, the win is the Jam Roly Poly for sure. So that's this guy here. You can see knobbly bits, you can see white chocolate, all low sugar, obviously, and there's you can see the fruit kind of tint inside. So yeah, you know you're on for something good. What have they said here? So it's 45 grams. I think it's like 16 grams of protein or something. It's not crazy. So you don't need to see me reading that. 194 calories, 7.6 fat, 16 grams of carbs, protein 14. It's a reasonably well balanced one, but I'll show you what we're working with here. I'll actually bite this. Mm. Yes. So base topping there, very, very jammy and sticky. White chocolate, you've got some crunchies going on. Yeah, it's a good mix of textures. Good nutritionals on it, good zingy flavor, nice standout with Jan Roly Poly. It's everything we kind of like in a bar. So, mm. sorry, still on this horribly busy road. Not sure if you could hear that, but a load of little kids on scooters. Very, very embarrassing, but they do it for some reason. Mm. Mm. It is nice, nice, nice. It has a bit of an earthiness, and I think it's maybe 
the fact that there is pea protein in it, I think there's soy protein in it, and then there is collagen in it. So it's, it's a weird mix of, of proteins there, but it gives it quite a nice texture. It's not tough, it's not too soft, it's a little bit crumbly. Pretty good. And the overall flavors, the white chocolate meshing with the uh, jam goes really well. It's actually a very nice bar, um, and, and it's unusual. So I've seen good reviews coming in. Folks have been liking these when they've been getting them in their orders. We haven't made a big song and dance. I think we, we pushed it on our um, newsfeed thing you find as a pop-up on site, and if you've done our push notifications, um, we probably won't do an Instagram post, at least not yet, but Minnie's taken some nice pictures. They're all on the site as well. I think we storied them. So, yeah, try this one. You'll quite like it. I'd be surprised if you didn't. It's, it's a bit different, and it's just, yeah, it's quite approachable, dinky little thing. And um, the chocolate brownie, uh, I'd, I'd take a pass on it personally, um, just because if you love chocolate, you can't go wrong. It's, it's like a chocolate brownie bar, but there's no real standout. So we, we tried it. It's like, it's okay. But the, the, the earthiness of the flavor is lifted slightly by the jam in this one, and it's not so much in that one. Um, so, yeah, I never like being mean about bars, and if it were bad, we wouldn't list it. But for the sake of balance, we do. It's just, this is a standout -y one. This is quite nice. The chocolate brownie is a take-it-or-leave it bar. But chocolate brownie bars often are. Um, same case in, in the one I'm going to come to next. So there's a CMP. That's up on site now. A um, little bit cheaper bars, but, yeah, they're quite tasty. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's nice. It's got a very nice aftertaste. Final one, then. We've got the Alani Fit Snacks. Woo! These look very cute. Very big boxes for what are actually quite insubstantial bars. Big wrappers for what are actually quite small bars. They do that. Um, but, they, yeah, they are incredibly cute. I love the graphics on these. It's the whole new look branding they're going for. So, eventually, the supplements... Where are they? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. These! So we got the pre-workouts back, some of the BCAs back, some of the pump back, some of the way back. Um, so I might have, I think I mentioned that in the last one, we got some Alani coming back in. That's doing quite well. Um, and yeah, we had to get the bars in as well. Is this still on? Yes, it is. Um, yeah, we didn't think we'd get the bars in, and they are slightly pricey, uh, but we got the opportunity, so we ran with it. Um, these bars are going to be... Oh, what's the mic doing today? It feels really uncomfortable. I'm just not used to it after not having done a video for so long for you guys. Um, Okay, I'm going to open this, and I pulled out the one I quite like. Again, fruity, following the CMP. This is their uh, blueberry muffin. Um, oh, I like the tagline on the box, muffin compares to you. So they put some effort, uh, some effort in. Yeah, it is very cute. These bars, 170 calories, 46 grams. So a bit bigger, but they're actually the same grammage as that CMP one I just showed you. 17 grams of carbs, 16 grams of protein, 6 grams of fat. I mean, it's damn near the same macros as that CMP bar, actually. Um, difference here, very crispy, crunchy. It's kind of like a soup cup cereal bar with a full coating. So if you guys remember the Redcon BAR bars, which, again, soup cup cereal bars, they didn't have a coating. They just had a coating on the underside and then like a drizzle. It's that. Maybe in the same factory. It's that, though. It's the, the, the same texture as that and everything. Same crisp and same crunch, same level of sweetness, the same slightly Americanized flavor system. It's very nice. It, it's, it's a little bit different to what anything else we've got on the market here. And it's, yeah, it's a bit more like a, I don't know, a marshmallow square type thing. Um, so like a Kellogg's Rice Krispie square, but yeah, coated. Coating's very, very nice. Flavor, very, very intense and sharp. Um, I mean, you, yeah, I'll show you. It's, it's a cute bar, but as I say, it's quite small inside the wrapper. Ooh. Come on. There you go. So, yeah, it looks great, looks very sexy, looks very appealing, doesn't look wonderfully natural doing it with those colours and then the novels and then the sheen to it, but um, it's perfectly pleasant. Uh, and again, reviews have been good. It's brittle, it snaps when you, um, when you, when you do that, you know, when you break it. Uh, so you can see crispy crunchies inside, very generous, again, crispy filled, I think, um, kind of fondant icing layer on the whole thing. And you can see there's actually blue bits inside. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. So, it might actually have real pieces of blueberry in here. It kind of tastes like it does. But the the, the fruit is really um, zingy. So, actually, it tastes a little bit like Fruit Loop cereal. So, if you like the Fruit Loop cereal with that kind of sharpened, you know, like a fruit attack with that almost citrus edge to it, you're going to love this. I personally like that. I know a lot of people don't, but it's, yeah, I do love Fruit Loop cereal. You get that vibe here, but with an overarching blueberry tone, plus the very creamy white chocolate around it. It's a good marriage of textures. It's a nice bar. 170 calories for it. Good calorie, uh, good macros too. Mm. I think it's vegetarian too, I should say. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Too much stuff. Mm. 
Oh! Game totally failed. I knew it might do. That was a danger move. But... <laughs> saves me leaving it on the table. Um... Yeah, five grams of sugar, so pretty low sugar. It is gluten-free, and I just want to check on that vegetarian thing. I think it is. Whey crisps, whey isolate. Mm -mm -mm. Soy protein, whey crisps. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -mm -mm. Glycerin, almond, sea root fiber. Yes, I think it's vegetarian too. So, yeah, there's that going for it as well. Soups up cereal bar, very nice. We've got three flavors. Uh, three flavors. Uh, that's the blueberry. There's a confetti cake, so that's the ever popular Americanized kind of birthday cake flavor. It's kind of got fruity specks and, and, and kind of sprinkles going on, so obviously we love it, but it's a kind of souped up vanilla. It doesn't really taste of anything particularly discernible apart from that. It just tastes like kind of icing. Nice though, sweet though. And then, yeah, following on from the CMP, they do a chocolate cake. Now, this gets very, very well reviewed. Now, I've seen on YouTube, some of the American guys love it. Uh, it's perfectly nice. It, it just tastes maybe a little bit dry. It tastes like um, like Nesquik. So if you got like, yeah, Nesquik cereal, crunched it all up and then reformed a bar with it and put a chocolate coating on it, it would be that. Uh, and it's, it's perfectly nice, but maybe it's just me. Maybe it's my hang up. I find straight up chocolate things. There's not a lot going on with them. But yeah, it's, it's nicely done with the coating and the macros and everything else. Pretty cool. They have a bunch of other flavors in the States. We'll get them if we can, but it's just these three to start. I think they actually do do a fruity cereal one. I think they do... There's a peanut butter one knocking around as well. Maybe one more. But we, yeah, we'll get them where we can. But we thought we'd try them. They're okay. Um, we might not do a full post on them because mainly it's the supplements we're going on with those guys. But yeah, the bar's pretty good. They used to have gummies, Fit Snacks, kind of uh, sugar-free, low-sugar um, jelly sweets. I don't know if they still have them, but uh, I, I always wanted them. We'll keep trying. Maybe we get them in. But Alani... Yeah, it's still going in the mix for now, so it's not doing too badly at all. People are refinding it, and it's a good, it's a lovely formula of pre-workout and stuff, as I say. So check out their ranges there, and hopefully we'll have some more bits and pieces from them in the new year. Okay, that's that done. Um, let's stick with snacks, then I'll get on to spreads and things. Uh, actually, no, I won't. I'm going to change it. We'll do spreads and things. Okay, I'm just going to lose that. Um, we have got Kayao. See, I have no idea how to pronounce this. Um, yeah, you go. Could be Kao, could be Kayao, I don't know. Kao nu Nutrition. Um, and there's a new one in the mix. It's a high protein peanut butter. Now, as soon as you say that, especially with the protein pick mix is concern concerned, you probably think nuts and more. Nuts and more we have done since the year dot. I, I think maybe 2014, I, I listed right at the beginning of that year when the company was only a couple of months old. One of the big things I really wanted to get in because I tried one or two tubs, knew it was amazing. So yeah, I've had it ever since then. It's been a fight often to get stock in, and I'm told it might be a fight up ahead. The prices might be going up and they're already expensive enough. But um, nuts and more, high protein peanut butter. It's that kind of deal. Uh, texture's a little bit different. This is maybe a little bit stickier, uh, but it's actually a little bit more protein in it. So that might be where it comes from. But fundamentally a smooth butter, packed with protein, so it's, it's lower sugar uh, as a result, like the ratio on that one. And um, yeah, it, it, I guess you could say it's like guilt-free peanut butter because the protein sort of offsets some of the high fat that people might tend to stay away from nut butters because of, despite the fact that it's good fats and everything. But we've got flavors too. So they're sweetened and they're flavored, so that makes it pretty cool, plus the protein. Guilt-free, delicious, yeah, very, very nice, especially this time of year when it's a little bit cold, a little bit dark. It's something heartier for your protein oats for your bagels, whatever it may be. You could just spoon it. That's, again, it always what I do. Uh, same as with nuts and more. Uh, but the things, yeah, nuts and more, it is going to, I've, I've been warned it might be harder to get hold of. And whilst they have some particularly crazy flavors and we love it so much, um, it is quite expensive and the rest. So we wanted to get another protein peanut butter to bring in. We struggled to find any, anything we really like. And branding on this one is okay. Uh, the guy is passionate about it. They've got more flavors coming, more developments in the works. Um, and uh, they, they're kind of ticking more free from boxes as well. So there's, there's things going on. He's, he's very keen to push this. And um, uh, the uh, we have some nice flavors already. So we've got milk chocolate that's sitting there. So it's just cocoa infused. Uh, but the probably the winners, the ones that certainly been selling better. We've got white chocolate, very, very sweet white chocolatey. And we've got salted caramel, very, very sweet. Not white chocolatey. Um, they're very, very, you know, similar kind of intensity, sweet flavors. You'll love either one of them. They're fantastic. If you love the sweet nuts and more thing, if you love sweet peanut butters, absolutely gorgeous. And then they do, he has a smooth, uh, it's not smooth, he has a, a classic crunchy. So it's, it's got like peanutty nibs in it and stuff. Again, it, it is still sweetened. So it, it's still not just a kind of Manilife experience or a Meridian experience. There is more going on. 
but very nice. It's got whey protein isolate in there as well, which probably combines to the, um, and concentrate, uh, it combines to make it that kind of sticky, thick texture. But I mean, it, yeah, it, it sticks to the roof of your mouth, but it's quite a satisfying thing. I, it, like, again, you look for it in products like this. There used to be a lot more high protein peanut butters on the market, kind of all died away now, and Nuts and More is the only one we've, we've deemed worthy to keep on. Um, but uh, yeah, it was about time we brought something else new in. And whilst we've listed other peanut butters here and there, and indeed Skinny Food Co, we just put a couple more of those up, uh, with the high protein ones few and far between, uh, we were glad to bring this on board. And I say the guy's passionate, it's going to go somewhere. So, um, whey protein isolate, whey protein concentrate, natural colorings, gum, etc. So, veggie friendly. Uh, um, they are keto friendly, uh, they're palm oil free, yes, because they're very low sugar. Uh, so less than a gram of sugar. So yeah, it's obviously the fats are in there and then the protein in there thanks to the reinforcement plus the natural protein you get in peanuts. Um, so it's pretty cool. Made in the UK, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it just tastes pretty good. Um, so we've got the four varieties of that. That's in the mix now. I think it's $6.99 a tub, um, which definitely makes it better value than nuts and more. And um, five grams of protein a serving, that's 15 grams. So like for like, it's actually slightly higher in protein than nuts and more. Around about 11 grams of protein uh, for the, the same kind of serving size. And nuts and more is kind of seven to 10, I think. Uh, so for, for like a tablespoon. Anyway, yeah, they're in the mix now. Um, now we will jump over to snacks again. We have got maracas. <laughs> we have got Smarties, essentially. These are uh, no added sugar, low sugar, I don't know how you put it. Smarties, only 86 calories a tube, 90% sugar, uh, less sugar than leading brands. So they can't say Smarties, but I think they mean Smarties. Um, so they've called it Hey Foodies instead of Smarties. 1.4 grams of sugar a tube. I mean, it's pretty amazing to pull that off, especially when I will open these because it is Saturday and it's close to sweets and why not? It's kind of what I do. Um, yeah. There you go. So, I don't know if you actually see that. Woo! They're essentially Smarties. So yes, they have mm, the answer to guilt-free, candy-shelled, chocolate-filled snacking. How do they taste? The chocolate is tastes darker than Smarties. Yes, less milk chocolate, etc., etc. So there's probably quite a lot of sugar in even the chocolate in Smarties. Darker chocolate, the same crunch of the shell, the same general sense of sweetness, the same. Mm, same kind of fun colours. Mm. Yeah. It's not a bad job. These are actually better than I expected. We saw them and thought 100% gimmick. They're under the brand Hey Foodies. I suspect it's the same brand as uh, Skinny Food Co. So I think it's still the same guys. Like when they do Fake Away. Same dudes. They just put a different brand on it. Just for maybe a different market, different store, whatever. Um, but they look good. You get a decent amount in a tube. There's not too heavy a premium for them, and they are very, very guilt-free. So if you're looking at them for, let's say, your kids, you could eat quite easily swap them from Smarties to these. Much lower sugar, much lower calorie, very cool. I don't think you get any grumbling or complaints. Uh, and for an adult or a, a kind of physical adult, but not necessarily a mental one like me, um, great for yeah, tossing on flex bowls and stuff. Anyone still does that. But basically, if you want to tart up your ice cream, you can get your Halo top, pour a load of these on it. You can get like a uh, Calo Fit so, uh, syrup or indeed a skinny food syrup, like the golden syrup or the butterscotch or whatever. Cover that up. You'd have a very, very guilt-free, very low sugar, um, incredibly decadent dessert delight. So you can have a lot of fun with these. And um, yeah, as I say, better than I expected. I mean, they, they don't taste quite like Smarties, but not far off. They're kind of you know, they'd be like the home bargain's own version of Smarties type experience. But yeah, they're, they're pretty much in the ballpark, so actually quite nice. So I'll be finishing those later. Um, sticking with Skinny Food Co, then jumping over. Uh, they've been busy. Uh, we've got a whole space of new stuff from them again. I've chucked a couple of things on the end, maybe honorable mention. Barista, they're really growing this range as Jordan's Skinny Syrup seem to die a death over here, which is really sad because they've been great sellers in the mix for years, and loads of you guys love them. Um, they are filling in the gaps, uh, better value, one litre bottles, very similar kind of texture there, better for drinks than it is for putting on things, they'll just run, it's all liquidy basically. Um, but you can stir into yogurt, that works really well. Um, gluten free, vegan friendly, blah, 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 flavored sugar syrup with sweetener, basically no calories in it. Uh, so we've got salted caramel pecan here, but we've got tons of others. So I'm only showing this up as an example. We have got, ooh, I mean, they're a nightmare to pack because they're even, the bottles are probably a bit flimsier than the Jordan Skinny Food Co. ones, uh, the Jordan Skinny Syrup ones from the States. 
and there's more liquid in them, so we have to be really careful. But we've got this mad one here. You have to shake this one up, I think, because the, otherwise the flavoring settles. But we've got glazed donut. It looks kind of like milk, very white standout, but yeah, again, very, very sweet. Um, Non-dairy creamer sort of vibe it's got going on here. But I, I pulled that out because it's got the pink label. We've got, oh, we're about to put up literally now, there's a stack of boxes there you can't see with them in. We've got eggnog, I think we've got chai spice, I think we've got gingerbread, but we've got pumpkin recently, the butterscotch came in. Oh, what else? Irish cream came in. There's a bunch of, we added three or four the other day. I can't remember, the bit same as salted caramel, maple, pecan, fudgy sort of thing. But very, very nice, very, very hearty, and again, establishing the range. So there's probably 20 flavors now, 15 flavors. They're growing fast, and I don't even think we've got them all. Anyway, they're in. Spread-wise, we've got more of these. Again, low-sugar, chocolate spread-esque things. Lots of these on the market. They're not protein fortified, but they are mega low-sugar. So they are significantly lower sugar than, let's say, the Nutella uh, variety of these things, or indeed any supermarket brand, supermarket spread doing it. This one, a little bit different, is salted caramel. Woo! So we've got some salted caramel protein ones that do very well. This is, again, mega low sugar version of these. Veggie should be veggie friendly, no palm oil, salted caramel flavor. What's in it? Uh, Multitol, whole milk powder, blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> a load of the usual things they fill these things with, but still very sweet, very enjoyable, very spreadable, very good for this time of year. Um, that is in the mix now. And we also have chocolate mint from them. So yeah, easy to say, chocolate spread. Chocolate mint, that is 92% less sugar than another chocolate mint spread. Not that I'm aware of any, but um, yeah, same deal as their kind of uh, straight up hazelnut Nutella type one. We've got duo spread, we've got white chocolate that's ever popular. Yeah, quite a few of them now growing the range, but mint very nice. Again, a little bit seasonal. Um, so yeah, it's your after eight vibe, but in the chocolatey spread. They're in the mix now. Um, what else have we got? There were some new things as well. Peanut butter cups. They're not on site maybe yet, but they will be up this week. So I think there's vegan ones, salted caramel ones we got. There's also white chocolate and regular milk ones we didn't get yet. But again, low sugar, slightly guilt-free versions of protein peanut butter cups. So of peanut butter cups. Um, so yeah, the Reese's equivalent, but done skinny food coast style, slightly more justifiable. Uh, we'll have to see what's out. We're never that impressed with the low calorie versions of peanut butter cups, but we'll have to see. They've actually done well with the Smarties, so maybe they've done okay with that and they have flavors and there's a vegan friendly one. So that's great. They'll be on site soon. Running with the whole flavoring baking thing. Last one I'm going to show you on the table here. Yes, kernel season's back. The kernel is back. So shake up your popcorn. Yeah, it's basically, um, you can use them for anything, but they're sweetness and flavorings meshed together that you can chuck together uh, with um, popcorn, certainly, but I think most of our customers do it with pretty much everything else. Um, so we got all the regular ones back and they've obviously got good ones for baking, good ones for cooking. So there's like a bacon cheddar and you get ranch and tons of different ones. So you don't just, you can use it for seasoning, you know, make your um, kind of prep ready meals a little bit sexier. Uh, but yeah, they, they're just, they're good flavoring systems. They're very cute, lovely little guys. They look great on a kind of kitchen sideboard or whatever. Um, birthday cake's brand new. Yes, it's very sweet, very vanilla-y. Yeah, limited use, but it is a special anniversary one. It is really cute as hell. Um, also, we got in movie theatre butter. So um, they already do a butter one, and they already do a basically straight up salt. Pick and mix kind of appropriate striped uh, thing. So they're going for a classic movie theatre vibe. In America, if you get popcorn, it's not quite like us when we get sweet or salty and kind of job done. Um, it tends to be North America... Uh, you get the popped corns and then they would put it under a, a nozzle. They put like hot butter all over it. So it goes through the bag and everything. Very, very old school. Probably very bad for you. But you, you get a very, very hot bag of buttered popcorn kernels at that point. Very, very nice. And then uh, what you tend to do is put um, either sweet or savory toppings on. So you shake it in the bag then shake the whole thing up. It sticks to the butter, it sticks to the popcorn, blows up in your face. It's, it's really intense, really, really salty and preserved and probably bad for you, but it's great fun. It's part of the experience. So I remember this from back in Canada. I'm guessing they still do it out there to this day. We don't tend to get the same experience here, maybe on a fairground, but less at the cinema. Um, but yeah, it's that kind of vibe. So this is the marriage of very, very buttery flavor uh, and then salt, which is kind of a flavor enhancer anyway. So yeah, it, it's um, this is this is the classic cinema experience they're trying to deliver in a shaker like this. So very nice, and you can use it for loads of other things as well. So yeah, it, it's like there's no right or wrong way to use these things. But folks love them. Every time we get them back in, all around the world we send these, and they, they are immensely popular. Uh, and yeah, if you haven't tried them, I don't, I don't where have you been? But we do have all the the different flavors back in now, including the cheesy varieties and the meaty varieties and everything. Um, also, slight spin off, they do tasty shakes. 
So we've got a bunch of new flavors of these I'm holding up here, obviously very popular this time of year, cinnamon spice, and we've got bananas and cream. These are predominantly designed for oatmeal. So oatmeal mix in, again, there's nothing to stop you mixing that and doing birthday meal, uh, birthday, um, oh, ah, no, this one, uh, birthday cake oatmeal there. Uh, but yeah, you mix it into your porridge and it's very, very intense, very, very uh, sweet flavoring. It cuts through really well. And you've got a lovely creamy bananas and cream one there. You've got a very nicely spiced cinnamon one. I, when I make porridge, I tend to put cinnamon in anyway. That's giving you that vibe there as well. We've got, there's like an apple cinnamon one. Um, there's maple brown sugar, very, very classic kind of North American pot, um, oatmeal sort of porridgey vibe. Yeah, they're all in the mix now. So we got them all back here and we got a palette full of the things. Uh, so they'll keep you going for a while and we will be posting about them on Instagram this weekend. So maybe you can see the video, we'll have the thing up. Okay, oh, that is it. How long have I done? Maybe 35, 36 minutes. So actually not too bad for me. Quick whiz through updates and I, I maybe I'll try and editing to try and jazz this up a bit because I guess this, this may be my kind of Christmassy message to you guys and a thank you and all that. Um, <clears throat> what else? Well, I've been over Pink Friday, Black Friday. Went very, very well. I say nearly killed us, but we actually got everything out on time and we had the couriers lined up we had two collections a day the works so we did it all through the weekend with collections we got everything out as promised and um i mean in fact some people might have got stuff ahead of when they should have done because the couriers were all delivering through the weekend so we upgraded and we did whatever um so yeah very cool pulled it off but it was it was intense and i, I just can only hope next year Obviously that we are still here and doing our thing and you guys are still shopping with us, but next year we can we can make it slightly more livable and perhaps then elaborate the marketing and that side of things because of the warehouse. So segueing into that, uh, if you followed the last couple of videos, I've mentioned it a few times, we have been looking for damn near six months for a new home for the mix. We found one um, and it's only the beginning of this week we finally, because I've been so distracted, but they, they've just not been getting back to us. We finally got approval from the landlords. Lawyers have been instructed. The whole thing is happening and it's terrifying. <laughs> mm. ah, so we're not like talking Gymshark HQ here, small company, no matter what the website might make it look like, it, it, it's kind of uh, manageable for us, just about. So five, six thousand square foot. Um, but we will probably, I'm going to try and film it a little as we're setting it up because it could be a bit, you know, good content and all that sort of stuff. And I never really veer away from this kind of backdrop here, but there are more of us here. We do some fun things occasionally. And I think this would be a nice one to kind of take you guys along on because it could be a good level up for the protein pick and mix. And we might be able to do a whole load of, uh, you know, extra cool stuff for you, more marketing, more talking to you on here. I don't know. So, I mean, a lot of you guys are, are yes, and we feel like you are part of this. A lot of the folks, I don't know if they're necessarily watching me, but a lot of folks have been buying from me since this was in my bedroom, since 2013. Like, really, I, it, it's crazy. But yeah, hundreds of orders they've done down the line here. And uh, there's no greater kind of, uh, you know, gratitude. There's no greater thank you. There's no greater, what's the word? Um, there's no greater kind of mark of respect than, than someone trusting us with their orders and their money and all this stuff for all this time. And it, it develops a relationship. And it's amazing. It's amazing to think that we've managed to do that, especially doing weird, wacky protein things like this. But yeah, it, it, it's, it's surreal and it's wonderful that I find myself doing it. We see the same names over and over. So I know we go on about that, but it really is, I mean, we're lucky. We're so lucky to do that. And I'm not sure many stores can say that. Well, then again, many, you know, it's not like Amazon sees the individual people. They don't necessarily talk to them on Instagram. They don't have the dialogue. So it would never work in that context, despite the fact that some of us probably order from Amazon every day. But for us, we always see the same people. We see this, and it's, it's fantastic anyway. So it personalizes the whole experience. And I want to make sure we keep that as it grows uh, still further in the year ahead, whatever lies in, lies, away, um, lies in wait for us, COVID and the rest. But warehouse-wise, it is sort of sorted. So it's with lawyers now, could still go wrong, but your yeah, money's been lined up, deals been agreed, terms been agreed, the work. So yeah, I, we're going to get a bit of a break over Christmas. I think like, there'll be the, the usual kind of seasonal slowdown as we're waiting on other people, but hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, touching wood and everything, uh, we will have keys in January. So shop we still have for a year and uh, basically we can't get it up and running again, COVID or otherwise, uh, until we've moved the online operation out and then we can do the shop again for the remaining kind of six months of the summer, maybe or something. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's the big exciting news for us. Um, and then we can hopefully grow the team and we do loads of other cool stuff. So yeah, well, I'm going to try and bring you uh, along with us on that journey. I'll film some stuff. It might just be that we end up kind of um, 
doing a kind of collage things like maybe <laughs> a, a kind of rocky kind of boxing montage thing as we build the thing up with some really um, kind of empowering and exciting music but I don't know in my head that sounds like a good idea may not happen but yeah that, that's moving um, and then uh, the other big one I want to mention this is kind of a bummer Brexit so uh, everyone's sick to death about hearing about this it's been years uh, but now we are hitting a brick wall we are hitting a final final deadline so the 31st of uh, this month of December, so 2020, last day of uh, 2020 is the last day we're kind of doing transitional procedures. As of 1st of January 2021, everything changes. And this is regardless of whether or not there's a deal. It looking, it's looking at this point that there will not be, which is making is going to make life harder. But basically, any way you cut it, we're going to have some issues in January. So I'm warning you guys, if you do order from Europe, if you order from um, yes, Ireland, potentially if you order from Northern Ireland, we're going to have um, a little bit of a hiccup, I think, because there are things that need to change, uh, paperwork, disclosures, different carriers we have to use. Like, we don't know. No one really knows how it's going to go. So I'm kind of warning you in advance, for anyone watching this in those areas, uh, that we might have um, a bit of a rocky January. So we're going to do everything we can to minimize it, and I'm working on the software right now to do electronic declarations and all sorts of other stuff. So we, we, you know, we've done everything we can, but I think there's no there's no avoiding the fact there is going to be issues, and that's that's not just for us sending, you know, sending abroad. We're going to have issues bringing in, but I think everyone is going to see some changes, and it's it's horrible, it's scary, but I guess this was the reality of the vote all that time ago, and where we bring ourselves now. Even if there were a trade deal we'd still have most of these headaches because there just has to be a bit of a change in, in conversation. Um, so, yeah, it will probably mean for sure delays because even if even if there is a deal, let's say, uh, stuff is still going to have to be, paperwork is still going to have to be looked at, checked. There will be trucks backing up, at least at first, until people realise, you know, understand where they need to go, how they need to, how they need to um, present things like hauliers, truckers, DPD, everyone. Um, and then... Ah, the worst thing is there could very well be customs fees and tariffs. So um, not to Northern Ireland, that might just be a delay situation, but to Ireland and the rest of the EU, uh, almost certainly there will be um, customs fees owing uh, from your local authorities uh, when the parcels come in, be it with DPD, DHL, whoever we're using. This is the same <clears throat> you might have if you order from the States. Uh, but it's, yeah, from the UK, you will have a similar experience. We will have to disclose everything that's in the order and they will process it and they will apply customs fees and duties accordingly. Tariffs. So uh, that really sucks. Um, and I, I mean, I'd love to say we can minimize it, but this isn't us charging you. So I, I can't subsidize what the government in, in France or whatever is going to be putting as a, as a tax on us sending over whey protein. Um, <clears throat> but we will see. Uh, the the plus side is we will probably not be charging you VAT. So currently, if you're in the EU, the prices you see on site probably include 20% uh, tax, 20% um, VAT sales tax uh, on the products that carry it, like whey protein, like protein bars, things that don't carry it, syrups, spreads, uh, most of the cookies we have, things like that. So most of the stuff does carry the 20%, most yeah, and some doesn't. But it's very confusing. It's just one of the headaches of doing retail in this particular industry. But um, <coughs> our prices, we're going to have to change that so they are not showing uh, 20%. So up to 20% might actually be deducted from the price of the goods if you're used to shopping for us for your PES or your Ghost or whatever it may be. However, you will probably be hit for that when it hits your country. So the, the guy carrying it, the DPD or whatever, will probably try and get that from you as a kind of this money is owing on the order and you'll need to pay that for it, for it to get delivered. Plus, there might be a customs fee. So that could be a fixed amount, like 25 quid a go, which is horrible, it's a big one, like we have when we send to Switzerland. Uh, but it, it may just be a sort of you know 10% surcharge that's added to you guys when it's actually processed, like an admin fee for your customs duty, uh, your customs officers. I don't know, no one knows. So I can't answer these questions yet. I'll put notices on site, we've sent out a little bit of email to some of the EU accounts who are on our mailing list. Um, so uh, yeah, we haven't had as much time as I would like to worry about this just because Black Friday, this crazy year, it's, it's a horrible time for it to happen. And I think if anyone could pause it or whatever, they would do it, but we are where we are. So yeah, big boring Blair thing and no one needs me going on about the, the ins and outs of doing this. And then I think ultimately 
whatever the deal is at this point, there will be a new negotiation and it'll get better. But for right now, it's going to be a bit of a mess, I'm afraid. So bear with us through January. We'll try and minimize it. And obviously, we'll try and we shouldn't have to put shipping fees up, for example. So that should be OK. It should be minimal change there. It's just the, the tariffs and the duties that we don't have much control over. So we'll keep you posted and then it'll be a suck it and see for the start of the, the year doing it. Likewise, UK folks, obviously, I think probably most of you watching this are in the UK. Um, there shouldn't be significant changes pricing wise. I mean, on certain goods, there might be like cars coming in from the continent. But from us, nothing massive, nothing that hasn't already kind of been priced in when Brexit happened the first time, when, we, when it first kicked in. Uh, but there might be delays on getting certain products like GOT7 we bring in from Germany. Um, and... Uh, what other products? I don't know, blender bottles we bring in, a range of products like PES stuff. Like there, there are still things we bring over from the continent. There may be delays and we will probably get hit with an extra duty and tariffs, 10, 15, 20%, whatever it is. So that might reflect itself in the prices there. And in the worst case situations, we might say, look, it's not viable to bring certain things in. So yeah, we'll, we'll update more down the line. Sorry, this is it all got very heavy with this. But yeah, this is a big deal that's looming. And I, I just want to make sure everyone, you know, at least our regular customers, the folks watching this are aware. And hopefully you can skip through this in the, the time frame below. I'm going to try and do chapters or something. Um, anyway, that's where we are with that. That's that's looming. So that's after we've done Christmas. For now, let's just enjoy Christmas. Goods coming up. Other things I'll say, honourable mentions. Um, we've got some candy. Christmas-wise, we've still got about a week to get Christmas gifts in. Our cutoff for shipping with DPD is probably the 23rd. We're not shipping at all on Christmas Eve, so they're actually closing Christmas Eve this year, but we never really have any orders to ship on Christmas Eve anyway because you wouldn't get them until after Christmas. Um, so 23rd, I think, will be our last dispatch day, very last day for DPD. Uh, it'll be the week before. It'll probably be the, what's that, Monday? Oh, I don't know. I'll, we'll have to put it up on site. We'll have notices. But it'll be a case of giving UK Mail um, a decent buffer and Royal Mail a big buffer because they've been sucking. Um, so we're upgrading where we can, but we've had some issues there. We've got Giant Snickers. These are huge. Um, this is, what, a half pound? What do they call this? This is a uh, 28 and a half an inch slice, 16 servings. Oh, it's a monster. I don't know. It's like a foot long kind of Snickers. Oh, this giant uh, novelty candy goes down very well. And we've got Reese's Pretzel Cups. A few other American bits. We've got some Dunkin' Donuts cereal and stuff in. So jump on site. They're quite good gifty things. These are fantastic gifts and are, are sure to fill you up for Christmas. Um, so we got those in. And we've got... I should say, Quest has been a nightmare through most of this year. Uh, we've got some Quest bars back. These are not great examples, but oatmeal we haven't had for a while. S'mores we haven't had for a while. And we've got uh, chocolate sprinkled donuts. We've got the chocolate caramel chunk. We've got birthday cake back. So we've got a load of the American flavors and hoping, hoping for more next week just before Christmas kicks in. Price premium, they've cost a bomb to bring in because Quest themselves are pulled out of Europe and it's, you have to, it's a big fight even in America to get hold of the stock right now. So coming at quite the premium, but we've had so many people asking, so many people desperate and loyal to this brand, including me myself. This was the brand I started the mix with. I want to keep it going. So we got a load of that in and um, yeah, if you can forgive the price rise there, uh, yeah, all American formulas, they all still taste great. All the creative ones, we should even have the new lemon. We might have some protein back. We might have some of the chips back. So yeah, Quest is not gone. It's just been a bit of a blip but we're going to keep that going as much as we can and these are back in the mix right now um, and the last of the European flavors are being phased out so I think we've got some white top raspberry double top chunk perhaps um, and some cookie dough but the rest of it I think is a roundabout move to US things so we're updating the listings as we move through the old EU stock and move in <coughs> oh what else ghost um, we are hoping to get some of their seasonal stuff in it's launching in the EU and UK and indeed the USA next week uh, it's the Frosted Sugar Cookie Whey, and it's a um, it's a cocoa hot chocolate mix with marshmallows in it. So it's supposed to be heat stable, so you can actually heat it up and everything. Um, and that's uh, very cool. And then multi bits, we're going to try and get some of those in eventually. But uh, we may not get the seasonal stuff. If we do, we'll do a big post and have some fun with it. Um, but otherwise, jump onto their site. It's got sprinkles in it. It's got little biscuity cookie pieces in it. Great. And obviously the hot chocolate marshmallow, big novelty one. I think you can get it in little packets as well as tubs. Cool. That's coming in. Um, and then I'm going to cut it off here because I actually need to um, get my motorbike out of the, the garage behind the shop because uh, they lock it. Um, so you've heard quite enough of me. This has hopefully caught you up. Thank you so much, guys. Um, yeah, I'm sorry if this is my kind of Christmas message and it's not even nearly festive enough. Uh, but thanks for an amazing year. Thanks for bearing with us. And um, yeah, well done for surviving 2020. 2021, any way you cut it has to be a lot better and we're going to have some fun stuff for you for our part but hopefully whether it's it's travel or seeing friends socializing and everything hopefully there's a, a a marked return to normal 
uh, once we get through properly the tail end of the winter that's going to suck and um, yeah the Brexit thing that's going to cause disruption one way or another to most people I think. So for myself, that's Ant, uh, and from Millie, Henry, Kaz, Marcus and the, uh, the range of folks who've helped uh, keep this ship running all through this year, uh, we wish you a very very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year uh, and all the best for the year ahead. We will see you on the other side. Bye for now. Bye.